What is up heroes, this is Midnight Zero, and welcome to Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village Blind. This is a series I've been wanting to get into for quite some time, and a special shout out to Rosemary and Caitlin if you're watching. Thank you for introducing me to this series and suggesting a play order as well. Um, like I said, I've been looking forward to this for a long time, it's always just, you know, too many good games and not enough time. However, I've been in a very puzzle-centric mood recently. I recently got hooked on Sudoku and Star Battle, and this was something I was craving in the video games I play, and so what better, you know, to go for than Professor Layton. And one more thing before we get started is this is a blind playthrough, meaning I have no idea what the puzzles are going to be, what the story is going to be, who the characters are, anything like that. And so I'm going to ask that you respect that as well, and refrain from posting spoilers in the comments or on the Discord. For me, um, for many of you that have seen my other Let's Plays, you're probably familiar with what I consider a spoiler. My, my definition is very broad. It includes concrete facts about future events, story-related or not, um, future concepts necessary for puzzles, future events that happen to characters, or even expectations regarding future events in the story or future puzzles. So if something has not been concretely discussed up until this point, uh, up until the current point in the playthrough, please do not discuss it. And worst case scenario, you can always ask one of the moderators on Discord, that is, um, if you're curious. And with that being said, let's, let's hop into it. We'll start a new game. All right, so we will put our name in. I should note that this is the first DS game we're playing on the channel, and that's pretty cool, so I'm hopeful to see that that goes well. To my dear friend, Nick. I should have done the lowercase. The things we saw that day in the village became a secret we would have to keep from everyone for the rest of our lives. Because, you see... Wow. It's a pretty dramatic opening, and oh, we got a nice little little cutscene to start us off. I mean, the animation is, well, it's the DS, right? <laughs> but it's cool, it's got character. That's one of the things I was really excited about, the aesthetic. So who do we have here? Okay. We have Professor Layton. I don't understand, Professor. Why are we going to help solve an inheritance dispute? And Luke. Um, some of you will know that a lot of times I play games with Japanese voice acting. Obviously, it's most fitting to have an English here. Um, and when there is typically Japanese voice acting, I will read over the text. In this case, I actually will not be doing so, as the characters will be speaking the English um, that I would be using as well. So, in this case, um, don't don't expect that going forward. And listen closely. So we're going to solve an Luke, inheritance dispute. Do you really think I would take on such an ordinary request as that? Ooh, L Lane's above those typical inheritance requests. Oh no. This is an altogether unique and exciting situation. And it has piqued my intellectual curiosity. Intellectual curiosity, what a buzzword. But I, uh... I suppose it would be best to explain the case before we arrive at our destination. Yeah, makes sense. I'm... I'm, I'm... I'm in very intellectually curious. Two months ago, Baron oh. Augustus Reinhold passed away. Do you guys notice that shift in tone? Shortly after his death, his will was disclosed. The contents of it were fascinating, to say the least. Mm, presumably potentially forged, slash an incentive for murder, maybe? The Reinhold family treasure, the golden apple, is hidden somewhere within this village. The golden apple. Interesting. To whomever successfully locates this treasure, I offer the whole of my estate. That's quite the stake. <laughs> Naturally, those who attended the reading of the will immediately set out in search of the golden apple. But in the end, everybody came back empty-handed. And that's where we come in, Luke. We're going to <laughs> drive in here and swoop up that State. It turns out that no one had even heard of such a treasure existing, until it's mentioned in the will. Wow, that's some puzzle, all right. <laughs> I, I love the voice acting so far. Quite. Augustus Reinhold staked his entire fortune just to create one more puzzle before his death. Interesting. What a perplexing individual. I wish I could have met him while he was still alive. It certainly sounds like you two would have gotten along, Professor. 
I guess I was quick to jump to the gun to assume that somebody had altered the will and then thus provided an incentive for murdering him. Maybe that's just me playing a little bit too much of the Zero Escape series and Danganronpa and other murder mystery type games. By the way, just what is this golden apple anyhow? Some speculate it's a rare antique, while others say it could be a gem, yet its identity remains elusive. Yeah, it's really interesting that if it's something so valuable, it would be unknown to so many people, and even after this person's death, that other people are revealing, oh, they're, you know, or learning that there is this golden apple, yet it's not being recognized as, oh, it's that one golden apple that's known from this, or that famous golden apple, or that really expensive golden apple, or that really, you know, sought after golden apple from this event, or, or whatever it may be. It's still, but still something of mystery. I shake the feeling that this matter is linked to some larger mystery, something huge. Ah, is that your famous intuition acting up again, Professor? <laughs> hmm. Well, our first step is getting to town. This is all so exciting. I agree, Luke. I hope St. Mystere is ready for the famous archaeologist and puzzle-solving detective, Herschel Layton. Herschel Layton. Okay. St. Mystere. <laughs> oh, Luke. It's funny you mystery. know as well as I do that I am no detective. Augustus Reinhold's wife, Lady Dahlia, has asked me to investigate the situation. It seems she came across my name by chance when reading an article about me in the papers. What'd you do to get in the paper? And you immediately decided to take her up on a request, huh? Oh, well, Luke, a true gentleman never refuses the request <laughs> of a beautiful lady. If you say so, Professor. <laughs> it looks like, yeah, all right. We should be nearing the town by now. Look at the map in the envelope and help me with directions. You got it. You got it. That's probably really what cringy. What's this? <laughs> that is quite the map. Lady Dahlia seems to have given us a test. We'll need to decipher this map in order to find the village. I see. Our first puzzle. She wants to see if we're capable of cracking the mystery surrounding the Reinhold fortune. I see. Care to give it a go, Luke? Sure. I will do my best. A puzzle like this should be a snap for the apprentice <laughs> of the great Professor Layton. The great Professor Layton and his mighty apprentice, Luke. Love Very it. well then, Luke. I'll leave this one to you. Think of it as a warm-up for things to come. Of course, we also wouldn't want Professor Layton, uh, you know, solving this puzzle while driving, right? Okay. So, I should also mention... Puzzle number one, where is the town? This puzzle's worth 10 Picarats. Okay. I should also mention that this is a DS game that I normally don't have um, you know, the, access or the accessibility to record on, so this is actually being played on an emulator, and I will be using a mouse uh, for touchscreen things. So if that doesn't work out, I'll try to improvise something, but for the time being, that's what we'll give a go. My village is on a road that leads to no other towns. I look forward to seeing you there. Use your stylus to draw a circle around the right village, and then touch submit. Okay, so we are in this car, right? And it's a road that leads to no other towns. So immediately this one on the left is ruled out because it leads to two towns, potentially. This one, uh, this orange one near the car, you guys can't see my cursor potentially. Maybe I should change that for the future. Let me know, let me know if you think I should include my cursor. Um, this orange one is clearly on the, uh, oh, so this is still, we're still in the tutorial. It makes sense. Draw a circle around the town in one stroke. Once you've circled your selection, tap submit. Okay. So this orange one is on the road with this other brownish one on the right. So that can't be it. And then there's the blue one that has this yellow uh, one as well. So neither of those is it. And by elimination, this upper left house is going to be the one. But just to be safe, let's make sure that this road, which is presumably um, this one in between the orange and the blue, leads to no other houses. We follow it, we get to this first fork, we go to the right and we get to a dead end by Professor Layton's car. We go to the left and we have another fork. If we stay to the left, we make our way to the house and if we go to the right, we follow the spiral into a dead end. So it is indeed going to be this, this house here. And we'll submit that. Yes. Oh, interesting. Correct. Layton's apprentice saves the day. 
day. <laughs> Saves the day. Gets us to the village. Love it. I guess also something worth noting is something I like doing during these sort of murder mystery games I've done in the past is really explaining my thought process and also after solving puzzles, hearing what your guys' thought processes were when you were solving these puzzles too. Something like this obviously might not be, you know, that, <laughs> that thought-provoking, but maybe later on it will be. Uh, the only town that isn't connected, looks like you're all ready to start solving puzzles. Yes, we are. There we go. Now we should be able to make our way to the village. All right. Right you are. We should see it on the horizon any moment now. Huh? Professor, do you mean to say you already figured out the town's location? <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid I couldn't help myself. A basic puzzle like that is easy enough to solve with a glance. Well, 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 we, we aren't all the great Professor Layton now. Anyhow, you'd best gather your things, Luke. We've arrived. Professor Layton and the Curious Village. Okay, here we are. You know things are about to get real when the title shows up. Wow, that's some uh, interesting architecture, to say the least. <laughs> Most certainly a curious village. Interesting. It appears that this drawbridge is the entrance to the village. And we're stuck on the outside. What should we do, Professor? Oh, look over there. There's a man standing on the other side of the river. Maybe he can help us. Tap an area to investigate. Interesting. Okay. Then investigate we will. Good day, sir. We're very much, or we'd very much like to gain access to the village. Could you please drop the bridge for us? Oh my goodness, that chin. <laughs> the aesthetic of this game. Do I look like the sort to go dropping the bridge for a bunch of fancy looking outsiders? Hmm. You got a lot of nerve. Sorry, Franco. We received a letter of invitation from Lady Dahlia. I don't suppose that changes things, does it? It's funny, the, like the entirety of his face is as tall or as long as his torso. <laughs> From Lady Dahlia? Well then, I'd sure like to lower the bridge for you, Mr. Fancy Pants. But the engine is busted, and I can only move this blasted bridge with the hand crank. <laughs> There's all these infernal slots I could put the crank in, but I got no clue which one to use. <clears throat> that solves like a case for the great Professor Layton and his mighty apprentice Luke. <laughs> so, smart guy, you got any idea which one is the right one? Well, we're already on puzzle number two. Worth 15 picarets, or however that may be pronounced. There's no way to lower the bridge and get across without inserting the crank into the correct slot. Choose the slot that fits the crank shown below. Tap the crank to change the viewing angle. Tap a slot's button to answer. Okay, so I can I remove can I move these around or tap the crank to change the viewing angle? Wait, no! I didn't want to answer. Luke, here's my answer. No, I didn't. I didn't want to answer. Frankly, says, I'm ashamed. Uh, let me let me try again. What? It lowers. It lowers my my score. Tap a slot's button to answer. Tap the crank. Oh, that. I see. Okay, so, so it looks like it'll be what? Interesting. So we need something that'll fit on this, right? So it's clearly, um, oh, interesting. The pentagon helps a lot because there should be a, a vertex between the two, um, or a single vertex, really, between the two block ends, which means it's got to be one, I believe. Yeah, I think it's got to be one in that case. Aw, oh, man, is that... That should do it. Is that something I should go back and redo? Like, is that something I should go back and redo? 
Am I gonna be upset if my my Picarats score is low? I don't know. Regardless, nice job. Now drop that bridge. <laughs> that upsets me up. That I I like mistakenly chose the wrong one. Well, whatever, whatever. I'll have, I'll just have to live with it. That'll do it. Hold on a second. I'll let her down. I'm gonna say it again, I just don't feel right about letting outsiders in to Saint Mystere. But if you're Lady Dahlia's guest, I guess I'd better. At least give her my regards, you hear? Puzzle 2. The crank and slot is now in your puzzle index. Interesting. And we're treated to another animation. I, I appreciate how many animations they're actually including in a DS title. Something that wasn't very much known for its, uh, well animation prowess, its resolution or sprite work, but they're definitely making do with what they have available. Yes, we finally arrived in St. Mysterio. I'm so excited. I wonder what mysteries await us here. Ha ha ha. Well, Luke, we'll find out soon enough. Just be careful not to let your excitement cloud your ability to analyze your surroundings. I'll do my best. I say, Luke, this is a perfect time to explain how to move about during our investigation. Give that shoe-shaped icon in the lower right portion of the touch screen a tap with your stylus. After you do this, a set of arrows will appear on screen. Tap one to head in that direction. So remember, when you want to move, just tap the shoe. Go on then, give it a try. Alright. I guess I'll, I'll give it a try then. I'd like to talk to these people first though. I could also use a little bit of drink of water. Oh hello. Pleasure to meet you. Welcome to St. Mysterio, where our local export is the puzzle. Oh, before I forget, you should know that every time you solve a puzzle, you earn a set number of Picarats. The more Picarats a puzzle is worth, the tougher the puzzle will be. They say lovely things happen when you gather enough Picarats. Imagine that, a reward for solving puzzles. For practice, try this little riddle that your hat reminded me of. Think good and hard before you answer. Okay. Puzzle number three, strange hats. Interesting, so Picarats are like a currency of sorts? These four top hats, the touch screen, it always says like touch and I'm like afraid that I'm going to touch the wrong thing and accidentally submit an answer. These four top hats are all the same height, but the length of each brim is different. In other words, the hats are equally tall but vary in width. One of these four hats has a brim and height that are the same length. Which hat is it? Interesting. The brim and the height are the same length, so it's definitely not B. And it's definitely not A. Just from visual inspection. It's tough to tell though, admittedly. Right? Just from inspection, whether or not... Hmm. It's either C or D, right? And I'd like to be able to, like, draw or measure but is it really just based on inspection? If so, I feel like I would go with C. Just from looking at it. But is there really anything else I could do to deduce it, right? All I can do is just some mental gymnastics, and I guess I would go with C. There we go. Maybe there's more, but what? It wasn't C? Frankly, I'm ashamed. Look at things again. <laughs> okay, so we'll try again for fewer picarets. I don't feel like that's so much of a, a puzzle. So much as it is, take a look. Is it D? D looks like it's too much. Or is it A? Are they referring to... I feel like D is definitely too much. And A and C are so close. Look at how close they are. I, w I would go with A. Because D looks like it's way too much. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, I'm going to go with A. That should do it. I guess it's A. 
<laughs> and I guess it was just visual inspection. Success. A and C were so close. This is a very famous optical illusion. An optical illusion is a visual phenomenon where your eyes perceive things differently than they actually are. There are dozens of known optical illusions. What's the world coming to when you can't even trust your own eyes? <laughs> oh, bravo. I think you've got the hang of this. If you try your options one by one, you'll eventually find the answer. However, you'll also encounter lots of puzzles that can't be solved by simply trying all the answers. If you answer incorrectly, the pick rights you earn from a puzzle decrease. Tough stuff, hmm? It goes to show you how important it is to think for yourself and find the answer on your own. Well then, best of luck to you. I'll be rooting for you too. Thanks, Ingrid. <laughs> okay, so next up I want to chat with this person here. Is this Franco still? Oh no, this is... Stashin? I guess it's fitting given the, uh, you know, stash. <laughs> what a dandy set of fellows you two are. Must be new to St. Mystere, eh? The name's Stash and Scarfin, <laughs> and I've got some advice for you. I wonder how they came up with the name for this character. Go tap that barrel back there with your stylus. Don't ask questions, just do it. <laughs> all right, all right, I guess it's wiggling around there. You found a hint coin. A hint coin, interesting. <laughs> Felt good, didn't it? Around these parts, that's what we call a hint coin. When you find yourself up against a doozy of a puzzle, you'll want a hint. Trust me on this one, fellows. And it's just those times when you'll want to use a hint coin to purchase a hint. I'm one of those people that tries not to use a hint as much as possible. I, arguably to a fault, pride myself on, you know, figuring things out for myself. Um, obviously, there are some reasonable circumstances in which I acknowledge the need for help from others. Um, in real life, but in games and puzzles, I like to do what I can on my own. I bet you think puzzles will be a breeze now, eh? Think again. There are a limited number of hint coins in the in this world, so don't go wasting coins on any old riddles. Because if you do, when you come across a real stumper, you'll be sorry. Real sorry. Mind you, hint coins won't always be stuffed inside barrels. Check any object that seems suspicious. Got all that? Good. Be seeing you around. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for the hint. Okay, um, so notably that barrel was wiggling around, which I think is going to be relevant. So we can go either forward or back. Let's go forward. Oh, and it's nice that we've got a map on the left. I've been thinking, Professor, should we keep? Should we be keeping a record of our investigation? You brought up a very good point, Luke. Let me explain how to go about saving your game. First, tap your stylus on the trunk in the upper right corner of the touchscreen. This trunk contains all manner of information that you can access by tapping the icons. Touch the icon marked Save to save your game. Tap the journal icon to read over notes about our adventure in St. Mystere. Next, we have the Puzzle Index icon. Tap it to view all the puzzles you've encountered. Puzzles you've solved have a check next to them. Puzzles you've seen but haven't solved are blank. Oh, interesting. It's possible to see a puzzle and progress potentially without solving it? You can retry any puzzles you've solved from the screen. To retry puzzles that you haven't solved yet, you must return to the actual set of the puzzle. Okay, so it won't be necessarily a linear progression of puzzles. Don't be afraid to use the items in the trunk to help our investigation. It'll be second nature soon enough. Enough explanation for now. Let's make our way to Reinhold Manor. An arrow marks our path on the map, so all we need to do is head in the correct direction. Lead the way, Professor. Okay. Chapter 1, Reinhold Manor awaits. Make your way to Reinhold Manor on the east side of town. Okay, I, I'm down. Something I'm going to want to do is save um, frequently, but more importantly, I want to find all of the puzzles. I'll, I'm definitely a completionist uh, when reasonable, and for something I enjoy, like, you know, the, uh, the puzzles, presumably, I will definitely... Oh, there's a hint coin there. That wasn't even wiggling, but... Oh, so there, there are a lot of hint coins potentially hidden. Who are you? And what do you have to say? Percy. Oh, hello. I'm Percy, St. Mysterious unofficial writer in residence. Reinhold Manor, you ask? Head up that road to the right. It's immense, so you'll know it when you see it. But before you go, why not try our hand at this puzzle I thought of? Awesome. See if you can figure out which house is mine from the instructions I give you. I'll even sweeten the deal for you. If you manage to solve this puzzle, I'll tell you about this village. So how about it? You will try, won't you? After all, a writer is nothing without an audience. <laughs> awesome. So we've got ourselves puzzle number four. Where's my house? And it's worth 20 picarats. Can you find my house? Go out... Okay, hang on. That, that like, touch text is uh, very annoying. Go out the front door of my place and turn left. Wait, where's where's your place? 
Oh, that's that's the point, isn't it? Go out the front door of my place and turn left. At the first intersection you come across, take a right. Turn right again at the following intersection, and you'll come face to face with the morning sun, which will be the east. So, by going out and turning left, and then getting to an intersection of right and right, you'll be turning to the east. Um, I'm fairly confident, then, that it needs to be this blue house in the middle. Just because you go out the front, you turn left, you get to the intersection, and you turn right, and then you turn right again. Um, but the, the main thing is, if you start facing north, essentially, and you turn left, um, you then face west, and then you right, north, right, east. So if you kind of go reverse, you need to start facing north. And I think it's the only house that does so. We can go and try the other options, but I know the one in the bottom right will definitely be south, and the one um, in the bottom left will also be south, because again, you just end up essentially rotating 90 degrees from where your front door faces. So, yeah, I, um, and I guess to further support the answer, there are multiple houses that face the same direction. So, yeah, and there are also houses that can't even follow these directions and that there isn't an intersection to turn right, like this house on the far right, for example. So, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with this one, and hopefully that's right. I'm always, like, somewhat afraid of embarrassing myself. Here's my answer. But, I mean, that's also somewhat of a, a fear I got over a little bit when trying to solve Every puzzles on YouTube over the answer. past few years, whether that was for Portal or Dog and Rapa or whatever it may be. That's right. This is a problem where working backward gets the job done fastest. It takes far too long to check each house individually. Impressive. I thought I'd set out quite the puzzle, but you made short work of it. Now for that gossip, I promise you. The Reinhold family owns all of the land this village is built upon. I hear they own all the buildings, too. I guess you could say this town sort of belongs to the Reinholds. Oh, so that's why the estate is so valuable. Well, I'll be on my way now, but rest assured that the next time we meet, I'll have a harder puzzle for you. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Percy. Now, we can uh, progress. I mean, admittedly, I know we need to go to the right, but I want to go to the left for the sake of exploration. Oh, I don't think Reinhold Manor is that way. Okay, so they're not going to let me explore. Uh, they'll definitely keep me on track. So we'll go to the right then and see what we meet here. Look at that man standing in the street. He's blocking the path up to Reinhold Manor. How terribly rude. Perhaps he'll move for us, but I have a feeling he has no intention of doing anything of the sort. Is he really taking up the whole pathway? We just saw him. Look at him. How is he taking up the entirety of the pathway? I mean, either way, let's um, try for a couple of these things. No hint coins. Doesn't look like it's going to open anytime soon. All right, well, let's talk with you. Let's see what puzzle we need to solve for you. Marco, hold up. Never seen you two before. What a couple of fresh faces like you yourselves doing here. We're here by invitation of the Reinholds. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have business through the gate. Business with the Reinholds? Is that so? Something strange here. Yeah, you're a fishy pair. Mm. I don't trust you, that's for sure, but I'll let you pass if you can solve this riddle. See? Of course. Just to warn you, it's a tough one. Isn't gonna be easy, is it? No way. Definitely not gonna be easy. Now I'm not sure if he's being sarcastic or not. Either way. Lightweight. 40, 40 pick rats! Okay, I guess... I guess he wasn't kidding when he said it wasn't, uh, gonna be easy. Here we have eight small weights that all look the same. However, one of the weights in the group is slightly lighter. Using this scale two times, you can find out which of these weights is lighter than the rest. So which weight is the light one? Okay, so load the weights you want to measure onto the scale with your stylus. When you've finished arranging the weights, press the red button to weigh them. If both sides stay level, it means the loads on both sides of the scale are of equal weight. Once you've found the right weight, place it in the answer area and tap submit. Okay, so there are eight. And if one of them is lighter, right? Using the scale two times. That's the difficulty here. Using the scale two times, and only two times, right?
So, theoretically, you could put four on each side, and it should be lighter on one side because the light weight is there, and then you could remove one of them from both sides and see if it's equal or not, but that would require doing multiple in order to actually see. So, I think the key is that you don't start off doing four and four. The idea is that you start off with either two and two or three and three, and then you add or subtract one based on then the initial result. I think you need to start with three on both sides. Because you'll either know it's equal, right? And if it's equal, then you know that one of the two remaining weights is the light one, and you put both one on each side, and then you're able to determine which one is which. On the contrary, um, if you put three on each side, and then one side is lighter than the other, you know that one of those three... Hmm... One of those three is the, the light one. So what you could do... Well, you would then need an extra time Probably. Potentially. I can't say you would definitively know, right? Because you could try taking two away, and obviously if it's then level, you know which one it is. But if it's not level, you still don't know which of the two remaining weights on the lighter side it is. So that's not so much of a guarantee, unfortunately. But it's, it's very similar than if you do two, right? Um, it's just a little bit reversed, right? So if you do two weights on each side and they're level, then you know one of the, you know, four remaining weights is lighter and you put two on both sides and one side will be lighter than the other and you don't know which of the two that you put on that side are actually is actually the lighter one. So they're just kind of inverses of each other. So is there a better way to do it? How does this even test whether or not I'm, I'm doing it correctly? Like what happens if I if I try it, right? So if I put like one, two, three, and then we can put like four, five, and six, and then say, all right, we're gonna see it. So the lighter one is amongst one, two, and three. So now what I could do is remove three and remove four, and I could weigh it again, and I would probably then have to take a 50-50 guess. The only way I know for sure which one it is is if I then remove two from both sides and see if they're the same or not. I'm trying to remember which one I, I put on each. So it was one, two, three on the left, and then four, five, six on the right. And then I removed two and three and four and five. And they're equal. So I now know that it's either two or three, but I don't know which one. And so then I need to restart. And I'd imagine they're going to then change up which of these is actually um, the lighter weight. And I feel like so long as I don't do the proper method, they're not going to tell me which one it is. And so presumably, okay, four, five, or six is the lighter one. I remove one, I remove four, I remove two, I remove five, and they're gonna be equal. Yeah, because I didn't do the right method. And I'd imagine if I try this three or four more times, I'm not going to get any better of a result because I'm not doing it the right way. And so I'll run into the same problem if I do two on each side, but I can't come up with any asymmetric way to do this that would, that would be more effective. Because, well, I guess out of curiosity, if I were to do like one and then two, four, I don't know, six, seven, something crazy, 
Okay, so it is more binary, right? It does. It tells me one side is lighter than the other. It doesn't tell me how much lighter, though, um, which is which is worth noting because that was the only way I could see something asymmetric being um, relevant. Because otherwise, well, if they're asymmetric, it'll be obvious which one is going to be lighter. Which means I do need to use symmetric amounts of um, weights. Maybe if I were to have some overlap. So if I were to do something like one, two, three, I'm actually gonna leave four there, and then do like five, six, seven, and determine which is lighter. They're even. They are even. And there's only one, so it has to be either four or eight. Did I just get lucky this time? Trying to figure it out? Maybe they're not looking for a surefire method. Because what I was thinking is then we could do two, three, four, and then six, seven, eight, and see how that goes. But at this point, I mean, if these are even, then it has to be four or eight. So, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Okay, so the lighter one must be four then. And we'll submit that. I'm not entirely satisfied with that because I feel like that, should do it. that wasn't the intent of the puzzle, but I guess we got it right. Critical I mean, thinking is the key to success. Cool. We, we figured it out, but I thought the puzzle was more so to figure out the two-step method to ensure that no matter where the weight was or, you know, you could always find out what it is. And maybe that's the case, but even then we started off with three and three just like we did in the past. So I do think we just got somewhat lucky, but that's right. You must load three weights on each side of the scale for your first measurement. If you manage to get that far, the rest is easy. All right. Yeah, the only thing is, if, if you do the first three and three, and they're even, then you're fine. But if they're off-center, right? If they're not equally um, balanced, then you still don't know which one it is. Unless you get lucky again. So, regardless, interesting for sure. Hey, not half bad. Pretty sharp bunch, aren't you? Pair of good sharp apples, the two of you. So, have we satisfied you? May we pass now? Of course you can pass. Move along, and you better make sure to give my regards to Lady Dahlia. Okay, well, cool, so lightweight has been added. We've made our way through six puzzles now. It's quite a few. Honestly, this is a time where, oh man, <laughs> got a com computer acting up. This is a time where I'd probably call things off, but quite frankly, I'm too, I want to do more puzzles. <laughs> is there any area in the background that's um, acting up? Regardless, we got this individual here. I'm, you know what, let's, let's give this puzzle a go and see what we can do. Raymond. And just who might you be? Looks rather astute, rather fancy. My name is Leighton, and this is my assistant. We've received an invitation to visit Reinhold Manor. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, hoo hoo hoo. We've all been expecting you, Professor Leighton. But uh hoo hoo, you'll have to excuse my skepticism. Can't trust anyone these days, you know. For all I know, you could just be another hoo hoo hooligan in a top hat. Uh hoo hoo hoo. What is with this guy? So how do I know you're the real Leighton? Did you hear that, Professor? The nerve of this fellow. Surely you aren't going to go through with this after an insult like that. <laughs> now, now, Luke, settle down. Leighton's like, understandable, I'll just have to prove myself. <laughs> so are you saying that you'd like to test me to see if I'm the real Professor Leighton? Precisely, Professor Leighton. Now, if you don't mind, would you please solve this puzzle for me? Okay, what, uh, what do we got? Number seven. <clears throat> 007. 50 Picarats! Whew! Oh boy. 
Get the three wolves and three chicks seen below to the other side of the river while obeying the following conditions. No more than two animals can ride the raft at the same time. There must be at least one animal on the raft in order for it to move. If more wolves than chicks stay on either side of the river, the wolves will eat the chicks and you'll have to start over. You can move the raft as many times as you like, but this feat can be accomplished in as few as 11 moves. Interesting. So load animals onto the raft by dragging them over with the stylus. The raft can carry a maximum of two animals at once. When your raft holds one or more animals, slide your stylus to move it to the opposite shore. The raft can't move without at least one animal on board. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is a this is a pretty famous puzzle. Um, admittedly, I haven't thought about it in a long time, but, but just to start off, um, there are some things we can't do, right? We can't load just one chick. We can't load just two chicks. Um, we either have to load two wolves or two wolves and or a wolf and a chick. If we load two wolves, we will then need to bring a wolf back. And then after doing that, we'll need to bring at least one chick. So let's let's see that route. I don't want to bifurcate, but for the time being, um, this will have to do. So if we were to move two over there, we'll then have to move one back. And then, like I said, in order to maintain the balance, we can't bring two chicks. We can bring one chick, right? But if we bring one chick, we'll then be bringing a, a wolf back, potentially. Um, and that won't do. So we can't bring one chick. We can't bring two chicks. We need to bring a wolf and a chick or a wolf and a wolf, right? And I can't bring a wolf and a chick because then I will have an imbalance on the right side. So I must bring a wolf and a wolf again. And if I do that, well... We're gonna be... we'll be okay, because we can bring a wolf back, and then I can bring two chicks over. And that... will not be safe. <laughs> because now I'm forced to bring one animal back, and there will be an imbalance on one of the sides. So that can't work. So I'm going to restart then, and we know that we must start by bringing a wolf and a chick over. So we do that. Now the question is which do we bring back? We can't bring the wolf back because then we'll have an imbalance on the left side, so we need to bring the chick back. So after we've done that, we must ask, what do we do now? We can't bring a wolf and a chick. Um, we can't bring a wolf and a chick, because that will lead to an imbalance. Uh, we also can't bring two chicks. Um, we can bring a chick, but I think we'll end up in a similar situation as we did before uh, with that previous route. And I think we're, we're pretty close to that previous route as well. Um, if I were to bring two wolves and we had three and three, I'd bring a wolf back, I'd bring two chicks over, and then I'd be in the same stuck position. So that's not the way to go. So what is the way to go then? Actually, it didn't even matter what that first branch was, right? Because now I, I'm still in the same position where I have one wolf on the right, and I have two wolves and three chicks on the left. So then what must I do? I can't bring a single chick, because then I'll need to bring a wolf back, and that won't work. I can't bring two chicks, and I can't bring a chick and a wolf. Why do I feel like I'm running in the same circles? Is the opening... I thought I did this, right? It doesn't matter what this initial other animal is, because inevitably I'm going to have to bring one of them back, right? And whatever that one is, it can't be a wolf. Or, I guess, essentially, no matter what, I end up at this state here. So the question is, what do I do from here?
And I feel like it has to be two wolves. But that led us into trouble before. So then I would bring one wolf back, and then I need to bring two chicks over, and that will be problematic, right? Yeah, that'll be very problematic. Because as soon as I do that, I bring this over, and then, and then what? Um, oh, actually, no, who am I kidding? I don't, I have the option to bring two animals back, and so I brought two chicks over, and that's totally fine if I just bring a wolf and a chick over. So I can do that, and then what I can do is bring two chicks over and then two wolves over. And we're good. Are we? We're close to good. <clears throat> I can bring one chick over. No, I can't bring one chick over. I need to bring the wolf over, and then I can bring both wolves back. And I can repeat the process, and we should be good. <clears throat> awesome. And it said as few as 11 moves, correct? So that is the, the optimal way to do it. All right, so we got that Which one correct. Is the key to success. Whew, feel pretty good about that one. Well done, this puzzle can be solved in as few as 11 trips. How many trips did it take you? Fun fact time, there are several variations of this type of river crossing puzzle, and they've appeared in writings dating back to over 1,000 years ago. I feel like what comes to mind for me is like cabbage, sheep, and wolf. <laughs> That's for some reason coming to mind for this type of puzzle. Oh, hoo hoo hoo! Do excuse my earlier rudeness. Let me show you to the manor. Everyone's waiting for you. Everyone? I was under the impression that Lady Dahlia was the only person expecting me. Right this way, please. Puzzle 007, Wolves and Chicks is now in your puzzle index. Glad we haven't missed a puzzle yet. And I think we're going to call it there. I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode. Um, we will head into the Reinhold Manor and see what puzzles await us there, who this interesting uh, Lady Dahlia is going to be, and what tasks she has set out for us. So far, I'm, uh, I'm very much enjoying this. It says solved six. Did we not solve one? That was puzzle number seven, right? Interesting. Okay. Well, I guess um, I don't really know exactly how that works. Maybe one of them doesn't count, but um, regardless, or maybe it's solved six during this chapter. That might be the case. Either way, I had a really great time with this opening. Um, like I said, I've been in a super puzzle mood, and so this is totally scratching that itch. And I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. The aesthetics, the, the characters, the music, uh, the animations. Um, despite the DS's limitations, this game is definitely shining. And I hope you guys are enjoying my thought processes, you know, that I'm sharing as I go through the solves. Hopefully it's not too frustrating for those of you that have seen the solutions and, and know what needs to be done. But either way, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode. But until that next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.